What's up, everybody? We are live with the one, the only, Mr. Russell Brunson. Russell, man, thank you so much for coming on Think Different Theory. I am so excited for this interview. I'm excited too, man. I appreciate you doing this, and uh, it's fun. We're all at home hanging out, so this is uh, this is our life the next little while. I'm pumped. Yeah, it's gonna it's a, it's a crazy time. That's for darn sure. How's uh, how are you handling the coronavirus uh, quarantine and everything that's gone gone on over there? You know what? It's um, <clears throat> it's been a little chaos with five kids who do not understand it or believe it, and they just want to go play with their friends. And it's like it's been it's been a little tough. But um, we had a really fun day yesterday and good time. So you know it's 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 good. You're hanging in there. That's right. Well, okay. <laughs> the the main purpose of this interview. I mean, we're gonna be talking a lot about your book, right? Traffic Secrets, the copy of it. I'm so excited for this box set. Oh my gosh. Uh, Guys, if you haven't got your copy yet, just like josh40.com slash traffic secrets. Get it. Russell Brunson is telling you to go get it. Tell everybody, tell you me to go get, get it. Okay, there you go. Russell Brunson said, all right. Russell Unless, if you said. hate money, don't get it. But if you do, especially, and I, I, uh, I was talking to this with my group today. I was, um, you know, during times like this, it's scary. And everyone's freaking out. It's like, everyone's asking, like, what should I do? How to protect my business? I'm like, the only way to like the life preserver for your business is customers. You need to surround yourself with more customers. Everyone's like, like freaking out, like stopping advertising. I'm like, Every reset, I've been through this uh, cycle twice now, and both times it fascinates me. The first thing people do is they freak out and they, they cut their marketing budget. I'm like, you guys, like that is, it's the lifeblood of your business. It is your customer. Like that's the life preserver. Like cut everything else, but don't cut like the, anyway. So um, that's what we're talking about because it's the most important thing I think we could, we could be talking about right now because there are a lot of businesses that are freaking out. And it's like, now is the time to understand these principles because that's what's going to protect you during this, uh, this crazy time. Why do you think it is that everybody is their first reaction is to go cut advertising? Because to someone like you, to someone like me that understands, I was actually talking to Brad Gibb about this, who you I know you know, and he's a client of mine. We we're talking about this, how everybody immediately goes like, hey, let's stop spending money on things that are actually going to bring us money. Why, why do you think that's the initial reaction of people? It's interesting, too, because if you notice when people start their businesses, the last thing they do is they spend money on advertising, too. It freaks them out. Because there's like, it's like a gamble, like, ah, is it really going to work or is it not? Right. Like I always watch people when they start, um, they start a business, like they'll buy courses and coaching and consult like everything except for buying ads. They freak out and finally buy the first ad on Facebook or Google or something. And they're like, cause there's a fear of like, this money's going to go out and there's nothing, it, it could just disappear and, and there's nothing that comes back for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if I buy a book, at least I get, I have a book. I can like show my, my, my wife or my mom, like this is what the money went towards where advertising is scary. Cause it's like, it can just disappear if you don't, if you don't understand it. I think that's why people are afraid to start. And the same thing now it's like, what if, what if the money doesn't come back and then all the things start going through their minds, they stop it. And at first, when you first stop your ads, your business doesn't just like stop because you have like the residual from all the work you've been doing. It's so like, oh, we're fine. Like it, it, we stopped it and we're completely fine. But what happens is then it catches up and your, your uh, stream of customers, your lifeblood um, dries up and then boom, that's when businesses hit. And by that point, it's too late. And so I think the, big, the smartest thing is, is being careful. And like right now, such a good time because politicians are buying ads. No, like so many companies are stopping. Ad drop prices are dry. Like it's, it's like the best time to buy ads like since I've been around, you know, probably the last almost 10 years. So That's awesome. And I think that that's super important. And on top of that, I think once – once it goes down like this, it's that much harder to get back up and going once everybody else starts spending ads again. Um, that's one of the things that I, I told my team. We, we put ad budgets behind all of our episodes. And I was like, just don't stop it. I want to hold our place. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but just don't stop. So they're like, all right. Okay. Um, I want to I wanna come at this from an angle of first off with the book, like why traffic secrets? And I know like for the diehard funnel hackers out there, the people that have been following you, it's like, okay, obviously it's like the next logical thing in the process of it. But I want to go a little bit deeper than that because I have all the books, right? This is the book, by the way, I owe you a huge thank you. And I know I've told you this before. I've done videos to you. This book is the book that made me my first six figures online when I was struggling to figure things out. Amazing. This book yeah. right here, I read when I was trying to start Think Different Theory. Again, it's the most amazing book ever. And like this book, I'm probably two, I'm probably two thirds of the way through this book. <laughs> and it's just like, I have it covered in like different highlighters. And I have it, it's so funny because I have different things highlighted. Like if it's an orange highlighter, it means one thing. If it's an underlined, it, like a different category. So I'm like going through so that when I go back, I'm like, okay, if I'm looking at this, I can do all these things. It's amazing. But why why this order of things? Like why did you write dot com secrets first and then expert secrets and then traffic secrets? And why end it with traffic secrets? Cool. That's a really good question. Um, so I'll talk about the order first. Like 
you know, I spent the first, man, my first 10 years of this business, like learning this business and um, dot com secrets is really like, this is like what I learned in the first decade of my business, like understanding these things. And it just happened to coincide with, with uh, almost the launch of ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels launched and it was like four or five months later is when the dot com secrets book launched. And it was cool because it, it became like this, like the manual for people to understand like how, like the strategically how to do a funnel and then the software became this thing that made it really easy. And so that, that was the, the first thing. And then what was interesting is that we started, uh, obviously we're watching churn numbers and stuff in ClickFunnels and we're like, why are some people killing it? Some people aren't. And like the, the, if you look at the, the funnels that make money, ones at two comma club and beyond and the ones that don't, the biggest, the biggest thing is like, um, the people's ability to, to, uh, share their story inside their funnels. Like that's, mm. that's the difference. It's not the product. It's not the traffic. It's like they, the people that are good at persuasion and selling and telling stories, those are the funnels that, that win. And so that was like, okay, that, that's the next book that we need to tell is like, if people have funnel structure now, but how do you tell a story inside a funnel that moves somebody and, and, and motivates them and gets them not just to buy from you once, but to get them to buy from you over and over and over again. So that was kind of the second one. And then the third one was just, um, you know, we've been in this, this season for the last man, seven or eight years um, uh, where most people that got started online got started and Facebook ads were a thing. And like, you ask them like, Hey, you drive traffic. Yep. I got, I got Facebook ads. Like that's, that's, and people in their mind, like that's, that's how they drive traffic. That's traffic. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's, it's been, it's been such a huge blessing for so many people, but I've just know I've been doing this now. I think I'm on my 17th year in this business. Wow. Um, and, uh, and it's crazy because like the ups and the downs, like I remember when, when I first got on start, like got online, like the, the Facebook ads then were Google ads and Google ads, were like the thing. And they were so cheap and so simple. And like, I remember my very first product was a potato gun DVD and I killed it because I was able just to put ads in and it was so cheap and so easy. And I remember this guy named uh, Chris Carpenter wrote a book called Google cash and everybody and their dog was out there killing with Google ads. And it was just like, it was like the Facebook that's been happening the last five or six years. And then literally overnight it was, they call it Google stop. It was just like, boom, just, just the ad thing shifted. And, and man, almost everybody I knew who was in business got destroyed. Everyone who read Google cash and did follow the process perfectly got destroyed because they only, they were one trick ponies. They knew one way to get traffic. And when it disappeared, it, it, it was done. And most of those guys were making, some are making a million bucks a month and now they're, they, they, they oh, don't no. have a business 10 years later, you know, they don't have a business. And then that, that was the first wave. And the second wave was like the SEO game. And then everyone shifted from paid to SEO and SEO was like, you know, at the very beginning it was like, how do we spam the search engines? And it was so much fun. And so easy. <laughs> like, I was playing that game where like everyone's doing it. And then like, and for like a year, two years, it was so easy. People make a ton of money. And then again, Google came and slapped it and changed it. And like, I watched this half people's business disappear. Yeah, and I remember then, you telling that story at at uh, Offer Lab or Offer Mind. I'm sorry, Steve, and you were telling us about how you would go in and just do that and just spam the entire thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much. Those were the good old days. Someday I'm gonna. I just yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. But that happened like in the the Google slap happened like four or five times. Like like we'd refigure it out, get back up, and then slap, figure out slap, 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 and then Facebook came out and it was like awesome. And then for for the longest window that I've ever experienced, it was just awesome. It's like economic boom, Facebook boom, ads were easy. And then a couple of years ago, we started seeing people's ads accounts get shut down and it's like progressively gotten more, it goes through peaks and valleys right now. But every time I, I talk to anybody in our ClickFunnels community, I'm like, how are you driving ads? They're like, Facebook ads. I'm like, what else? Like, that's, that's how we drive our ad campaigns. And I'm just like, ah, and I was sick to my stomach knowing that like, this, this is going to change. It's going to shift. It, like history repeats itself. Like there's no way it's going to continue to be this way. And, um, and like when, when we started driving traffic back in the day, we didn't have Facebook. In fact, there's, there's Facebook and before Facebook was MySpace for MySpace, there was Friendster before Friendster, we were still driving traffic. It's like, how did we do that? What was the differences? And, um, and so that was what this book I really wanted to bring out. It was like, help people understand like the core fundamental strategies of traffic so that when Facebook disappears or Google ships or the economy goes crazy or whatever, how do you get customers in any market, regardless of, of whatever the platform is like understanding that the overarching strategy. So when you do that, then you can go to any platform. I can go to TikTok, I can go to Twitch, I can go to whatever new thing pops up in six months from now and I can apply these strategies and get traffic from, from any of them. And so I think it's really, my goal with this is to equip marketers to be more than just a one trick pony prepare them for this storm that we're kind of stepping into right now. Well, and I think that's, that's super interesting that you say that. I mean, in any economic time, the good times, the bad times, I mean, you know how to drive customers to it. And it's almost like, when we, th when we talk to rich people, right? We talk to millionaires, we talk to whatever. It's like have multiple streams of income. That's what we hear all the time. It's like, don't rely on one source of income. And so we have this idea of like, if we want to get rich, if we want to you know, become wealthy, we have to have multiple streams of income. The same thing is true when it comes to traffic. 
You know what I mean? And I, I don't think people understand traffic, that. Yeah. And it's like, if you want to have multiple streams of income, why not have multiple streams of traffic coming in to those streams of income or to those businesses that are providing you income? And I think that what you do here, at least from what I've seen in the book, is like lay out not only all the different traffic sources, but like you said, the, the underlying fundamental foundations of that. And so I'm curious how you figured that out. And, and by the way, guys, if you want a copy of Traffic Secrets, www.josh40.com slash traffic secrets. You can get the book, you can get all the bonuses. And do we have an update yet on the Traffic Secrets live event? <coughs> do we know when that's happening still or no? I was so sad. First off, can we first off, can we talk about how you asked me? Yeah, yes. Oh, I'm such a punk. We were planning like uh, speakers for the Traffic Secrets live event. And then uh, we're like, we should ask Josh, it'd be amazing. And then I'm like, we can't just ask him though. That wouldn't be any fun. And so, uh, <laughs> I got to pull this up. I'm going to pull the voice for clip up while you tell this story. <laughs> Cause I think you had just done a face. You did something. I can't remember Facebook live or something. And I, I see Catherine Jones was, interview was the day before the day yeah. before. And I knew my name had been brought up or something. So yes. I told miles and Jake, I was like, I was like, just mess with him and, and, and ask him, uh, ask him like, what's, I can't remember exactly what they said, but basically they're like, like, hey, uh, like, like, what'd you say about Ru about Russell yesterday? Because he came in really upset to the office today. <laughs> you guys pull my chain so much, freaked me out because I'm sitting there and and my or Jake messages me first and is like, what'd you say about Russell yesterday on your interview? Like, he was really irritated this morning. I was like, I don't know. And then like five <laughs> minutes later, Miles messages me and is like, um, dude. What did you say to Russell? He is ticked off. Something about you said about his personal life. He is irritated. I'm like, his personal life? I don't even know what we <laughs> talked about. Like, just freaking out. I messaged my assistant right away. I'm like, listen to the interview, 2x speed. Find what we said, right? So my, it, my assistant's going through this, and then you message me, and the first thing you just say is just, dude, right? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what did I do? My heart is racing at a million miles an hour. I've been dreaming hunting this guy for two years. Like, how did I blow it in one interview? I just don't get it. Can, can I play this clip? Yeah. This little clip of what you said. All right, guys, here, here's how he asked me. Ready? So, so keep in mind, though, this is, this is after he's given me a complete heart attack, making me think that I've done all these things wrong, and then he plays me, sends me this. <coughs> uh, let's see. All right, dude. So this is the deal. We're sitting here. Can you hear that or not? A little bit, yeah. Oh, hold on. Let's try this now. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, no, it completely reset on me. Hang on. Sorry. But anyway, so he asked me by first freaking me out, and then here we go. All right, dude. So this is the deal. Can you hear that or not? Here. Not very well. And Guys, I don't know why Why it's not. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Sorry about that. All right, dude. So this is the deal. We're sitting here, and we're trying to plan the Traffic Secrets live launch event in Boise, and we thought... Wouldn't it be cool if Josh Forty was one of our speakers? Woo! And we thought, but we can't ask him unless we mess with him for a few minutes first to make him think that something yeah, yeah, yeah. bad is happening. <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry. Okay, so at least at least you admit you're the worst on there, and then I reply back, <laughs> I hate you all because you gave me a heart attack. But uh, first off, thank you so much for asking me. I'm I'm super super stoked about it. Um, creative way, but very very rude. <laughs> very very rude. It's gonna happen though. I promise. What, um, do we have an update on that? I think everyone's kind of waiting to see what's going to happen the next two or three weeks. Like everything shut down. And yeah. then um, if things start opening, then we're going to start getting new dates and everything. So, okay. It'll happen. All right. So guys, make sure, well, if you place in the top 20, right, is it top 20 of the affiliate competition, you get to fly out there and hang out with us or something like that? I think so. Something like that. Know. So, yeah. but guys, make sure to watch that. I want to go back to the book though. Uh, how did you learn everything that was in the book? Because one of the things that I've learned along the way of my entrepreneurship journey is like, when, as you evolve and as you become like the leader in your company, you start to do less things, right? So like you hire a traffic person or you hire an offer creation person, you hire a copywriter, you hire all these different you know, pieces. And that's kind of the phase that I'm in in my business. And then I sit down and I start reading this book and I'm like, I know Russell isn't the one sitting there every single day, like buying the traffic. I know that's John, right? And, and you know, had John and talked to him and things like that. And I know Dave does things. And I know Todd does things. Like how did you figure out and how did you learn and get so good about understanding traffic? Is this something that is like, you just were like, hey, everybody give me their best advice and you put it together? Or are you like, is this something that you absolutely need to know in your business? And that's why you know it because it's so important. Like how do you, how are you so good at this? And why are you qualified to write this book? Yeah, I, I think it's, um... I think a lot of entrepreneurs mistakenly, they don't understand the strategy of something before they do it. They're just like, oh, can I need a track person? Let me hire a traffic person. I need a funnel person. Let me hire a funnel person. And I'm very much, um, I, I may not do all the pieces, but I have to understand the strategy 
because if something's wrong, like I gotta be one to steer the shit back. Like, oh, we're not going the right way, right? And so um, I'm a big believer that entrepreneurs, it's why I, 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 listen, I study more than probably anyone I know in this industry still, because um, my job, I have to understand the strategy, not the tactics. I gotta understand the strategy so I can be like, hey, John, this, this, this. He's like, oh, that's awesome, let me try this. And so I need to have my, my finger on the pulse. Also, when I got started in the business, I didn't have a team, it was just me. And so it's interesting. I talked about it a little bit in the book here at the beginning. Like I, I didn't learn my traffic from like, I bought a Facebook ads course and learned, <laughs> and learned ads. Like I literally joined Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer's mastermind group. And I go to this thing and I was the only internet nerd in the, in the room. Everyone else were doing direct mails, radio, postcards, newspaper campaigns. And like, they thought I was like the magic wizard because I like, I could do use the internet. And so I'm like learning from these guys and they're talking about like how to, how to scale a direct mail campaign. And we're sitting in meetings for hours discussing that. And like, how do you like, okay, if you wanted to do a direct mail campaign, how do you do it? And like the, the process was not go by face, you know, go by, it was like, okay, we need to find, we need to find um, a list of co- like, who's your customer demographic. And we take the customers we knew and we scrape them through these services and pop back. Okay, here's all the, here's the, the analytics, the cycle analytics of all your customers. We knew exactly who they were. And we found lists that match that. And then from those lists, we didn't buy the, we didn't buy like the, the, the basic list. We buy like the hotline buyer list. So who are the buyers of people that bought similar products? And we look at, Things like RFM, recency, frequency, monetary value. Like, there's all these things we had to do to figure out how to get direct mail to work, right? And uh, and it was all about like finding the list and then how to tap into those lists and then how do you get to convert higher? Like, how do you how do you get people to do certain things? And and so that's like where I learned traffic from. And then when like these ad things started coming out, like Facebook, it was like, oh, this is so easy. <laughs> like, this is because I understand these principles. Right. And then like when when Facebook or uh, you know um, uh, Instagram or YouTube, when we started going these platforms. It's like, oh, because you know, it's not like ever, I think uh, this generation, this marketing generation, that sounds stupid. I look like I'm 11 years old. I'm <laughs> like, like, again, I'm like 17, 18 years in this business. Like the last like four or five years of my, I've seen like, there's been like four or five generations since I've been online of like these groups of people that come and go. And like in this generation, I think the generation or whatever, we needed a better name than that. But the ones that are in here right now, like they, they came into this era and they think that the internet is, is, um, is, uh, is a business. It's like, no, no, you don't understand. Internet's media. It's a channel, right? The same way the radio is a mm. channel and direct mail, like, like the internet is just a channel. And so it's like, it, because of that, like it follows the same rules as the other channels, right? So the rules of direct mail are the same as the rules on, on the internet. Most people understand they just jump to the internet and, they, and they're just doing the, the tactics to do the thing. Cause like, Oh, I learned that you, you target someone, you buy these ads, like the things it's like, you're doing it, but if there's a shift, you, you don't understand the foundational strategy. So like you're, you're in big trouble. But if you understand like, here's mm. how it works in direct mail and classified ads and newspaper. And all of a sudden like now we have the internet, which makes it faster and exponentially better, but I still understand the core fundamental strategies, man, that's how you can grow your company so much, so much faster. Does so that makes sense. Yeah. So basically once you understand how something works, then you base, then you're able to go and say, okay, the platform may change, but every platform has to have certain key elements to it. And then yeah. once you figure out how that platform is going and using those key elements or use those things, then you just plug in what you already know and go, okay, so I need to pick my targeting. I need to know who I'm targeting. Well, that's where we do it in Facebook ads here. And then that's where we do it with Google ads here or Instagram ads here or whatever that is. So you just basically take the framework and plug it into the system because all traffic channels have to follow some basic framework in order for them to work. 100%. Okay. And then each channel's got their own like art on top of it, right? Right, like, right. With things like Instagram, you're different than Facebook and different YouTube. So it's understanding the art, um, but the art changes as well. So it's like, you have to, that's the stuff that you, like, is, is always shifting, but the core fundamental strategies, like, like if we were to go buy direct mail campaigns right now and I watch you through the process, you'd be like, this is very similar to like what we're doing over to here. What we're doing over here. <laughs> yeah, okay. I want to shift just a little bit here and I want to be respectful of your time too, but um, slightly different than the book, but I think it's a core question before I, we kind of wrap up there. I want to talk about mindset and, and the questions that you ask a little bit. So I, I really firmly believe that from a mindset perspective, from a success perspective, from in all areas of life, not just in business, like the questions that you ask really ultimately determine the outcome that you get. And I'm curious to know, like what you're saying, like, okay, first we would figure out this and then we would do this and then we figure out this. Like, how did you know what questions to ask and how do you decide and maybe this is the better question, like now, like how do you determine what questions that you need to be asking in order to get the answers to make decisions? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it's interesting as I watch like people try to learn. Um, the people that struggle, I feel like are the people like information comes at them and they're like, 
trying to grab all of it and trying to do it all. Um, I, I, when I joined my very first, it was the Bill Glazer Dan Kennedy Mastermind, the very first one I ever joined. I remember going there and again, like uh, people talking about events and, and direct mail also, but I, I was like, I don't know how to even process this because it was like so different. I'm like, do I even need this stuff? Do I not need this? <laughs> and I remember going back, um, I can't remember it was the first night or maybe the next meeting, but I sat down before I showed up. I said, okay, I'm going to, I, I need to understand what my business actually is. I need a framework. And I didn't call the framework back then, um, but I always doodle stuff. You've noticed that in the books. Like, yeah. so I, I kind of doodle like, hey, this is my business. Like, I I drive ads to a landing page. I sell back then. It was I sold a DVD, and then from after some sales DVD, um, excuse me, we send them a direct mail letter two weeks later, uh, trying to get them to call us, and then uh, and then fourteen days later, we called them on the phone. We sold a five thousand dollar coaching. And, like that was the business, right? So I I drew, I drew that down, and I remember going to the meeting. I set a piece of paper with my like my framework, my business model down. And as everyone was teaching stuff, I look at it. I was like, I was like, oh, that's really, really cool. But I'm like, oh, it doesn't fit here. I'm going to put that over here. And later I'll, like, I'll look at that again later, right? Next thing comes in, like, ah, I don't need that. And then something comes like, oh my gosh, that help would help me get more people into my, into my business. So I plug that in like, okay, I'm gonna, like, I need to learn that one. That, that's essential for me to grow what I'm doing. The next thing will come. And I just started like getting good at like sorting information. Like, hey, this is awesome. I'm going to put it over here. This is awesome. Put it over here. And, and I started putting things in shelves, but I didn't, I didn't like try to learn it or master it or it because it wasn't important to me. I just looked like, what am I actually doing? What, what do I need to understand today? Um, Stephen Larson spoke at uh, Two Funnel Hacking Lives ago about, he called it just in time learning, where he's like, every time I read, like every CEO reads 52 books a week. And it's like, ah, the CEO is not like the entrepreneur though. The entrepreneur has got to be able to filter information better. So like more important, like, like what's the next step? And so I, I'm very much in alignment with that of like, okay, here's my funnel. Here's the process. Here's what I'm doing. Like, what's the next piece I needed? And so I remember at that, at that next mastermind meeting, hmm. I, I had my $5,000 thing. And, and my big aha then is that um, um, somebody asked me, they're like, well, what do you sell to people that, that spent $5,000? I'm like, nothing like that. They spent $5,000. That's a ton of money. And one of the guys in the group said, he's like, he's like, that's a $5,000 buyer lead. You should sell them something else. I was like, no one will spend more than five thousand. Like my head, the, the limiting belief. <laughs> right, no one right, spend more right. than five grand. It's impossible. And then that night, and I spent like I think eighteen grand to be in that room. That night, they pitched us on a thirty thousand dollars thing, and nine of the eighteen of us in the room bought it. And I was like, oh my gosh! And so like, I, <laughs> out, I'm like, I needed the next thing, and so I, I added the the next expensive thing, and also my business grew, right? So and I and I had to figure, okay, to do that piece, what do I need to do, what do I need to learn, who do I need to talk to, who do I need to, and like and figure that out, and then it, it was in place, and then it was done. I could step back from it. And so I think the biggest thing is just understanding that like, like learning to learn is, is fun. I think it's made me a good consultant, a good coach. Cause I have so many things I've learned that, that I don't use. They're just on the shelf over here, but I can be like, Oh, Josh, you should use this thing. Or, oh, and so-and-so did this over here. And I can, I can use them, but I don't think I have to do all of them for myself. That just gets overwhelming mm. and causes so much pressure that it freezes people up. So I think for everyone listening, it's like, you gotta become really clear. Like what is your business actually look like? Like what's it look like? And then anything that's not supporting that, like you can still listen to it, but don't, don't try to do it, you know, and right. try to do like eight, 18 things at once. It's like, no, make your business simple. The good idea is, po- you know, put them in, in a shelf for, for another time. So you don't feel guilty that you, that you're not using, not applying. Right. a lot of times you get guilt. Like I'm not applying the stuff I'm learning. Like that's fine. Like just put it over here when you're ready for it to be there. And then figure out what's the next thing you have to have to get the next level, the next thing you're trying to focus on. And then just really focus on, on that and focus your learning around trying to figure out the answer to one question, not to all the questions. I love that. I love it. Okay. I want to shift to a question. I I did a post letting people know that you're coming on here, obviously. And one of the questions that continuously came up over and over and over again. So I feel like I have to ask you this and I'll let you just have answer it how you want, but transitioning into this. All right. So you followed your framework. You've built ClickFunnels. Congratulations, by the way, billion dollar company. You're the CEO. You live the American dream. You're the most humble guy in the world. What's next? (laughs) What is next? Well, right now it's to weather the storm and help our funnel hackers weather the storm for the next little bit. Um, <clears throat> I, it's 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 such tough tough question because what's next for me has shifted so much in the last six months. It always is like I, I don't know. Um, I would say the thing that I'm most excited to do next is um, I think you may have heard I bought Bootstrap.com and I want to write a book telling the ClickFunnels story. I think all of these books, as much as I love them, they've been like how-to books. Um, like how to do this, this, and I, and I, I want to like, I want to learn how to write differently. I want to, I want to learn how to tell a story. Yeah. A level I've never done before. And, um, it's like, in fact, uh, tonight I've got an hour block down to start reading, uh, the hero of a thousand faces and start studying story again, deeper, um, to start learning. Like, anyway, so that's what I'm most excited for and what that looks like long term. I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means. Yeah. I don't know. There's so, there's so many un, unknown things that it's shifted so many times. 
um, you know, especially just in the last week even. Um, but I think for me, it's just, it's just, this is art and I love it and I'm obsessed with it. And it's just like, I want to keep understanding it better at different levels because it gets more fun. And I can help more people with it. Um, I feel like telling the click funnel story is going to be fun because it's going to help people um, identify parts of their story that they might be missing. Right. Like I, I tried to, some of you guys know the story. I, I tried to build click funnels three times before we built click funnels. I'm like, why did it fail? And there were pieces missing the first time and the second time and the third time and the fourth time it hit. And it's like, what were the pieces? Like, what were the people? Like who were the who's that had to come in alignment to be able to make this, this thing actually happen. Yeah. And I feel like telling that story is going to help people. Cause I think a lot of people think it's like, Oh, Russell's a genius. And he built this thing and he launched it's like, no, Russell's an idiot. Russell's like, <laughs> it's like he needed a Todd and he needed a Ryan. He needed a Brent and a Dave. And I'm like, there are these, these characters that all played a role into it. And it's like, when people understand that more so it's like, Oh, like that's, those things are essential in the business. I think a lot of times, because I'm the one on camera, they think it's me. It's like, it's, it's not me. And, and I want to be able to tell all the, the full story. So that's a big part of it. Um, also, uh, I, I want to figure out a way. I don't know. I, I, I'm not a good, I, like, you can ask Brad and Ryan this. I'm not great at investing money. In fact, the few times, I think twice I've invested in money, both times it turned out to be a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> so if, if I think it's a good investment, it means it's probably like a scam. So don't trust my investment advice ever. Um, but I want to invest in entrepreneurs um, who have good ideas. Like that's something I understand I can control. And so um, I think sometime in the next probably two years or so, there's going to be a vehicle we create. And I don't know what that looks like yet. I have some ideas, but where entrepreneurs can come to us. And instead of like us giving them money, because I don't think that's the answer. It's, it's us supporting. Because if, if, and I hate saying this out loud, but like ClickFunnels doesn't need another funnel to grow ClickFunnels. As much as I love building funnels. Uh, but I love my team and I want to keep the team together. I want to do more stuff. So yeah. it's like, I want, I want to find the right people where we can apply the funnel. So it's like, imagine Shark Tank, they give you some money. Like, instead of like, how do I get an entrepreneur to come to me? And then we give them a funnel to help propel, right? It's so like me telling the bootstrap stories to show like, you don't need to have money to funding. You just need a funnel. We'll do it. And then, and after that story has been told now, it's like, okay, now I want to go and find cool businesses and entrepreneurs and people and help apply these principles and see what can happen in other, in other places uh, where I'm not the face of the, the companies, the brands, but I'm able to help uh, take what we learned in this journey and and uh, help help people tell that story a little bit better. So anyway, those are things that get me excited right now, and I'm not sure exactly how they look, but they're going to be cool. <laughs> All right, well, guys, a little something to look forward to. There, a little sneak peek into the future of, of Russell. Um, I do want to be respectful of your time. How how much more time do I have here with you? Uh, should we go 15 more? That'd be awesome. Cool. All right, so so let's let's transition then into slightly back to the book with with Traffic Secrets in and, and kind of looping that back around into that. So entrepreneurs, you're like, okay, entrepreneurs need funnels. You need a funnel to get where you're at today. A funnel's not gonna grow yours. So you've given people the framework here, right? And and I, I'm a big believer in mindset. I mean, the whole podcast is around mindset. The whole podcast is around, you know, getting people to think different, ask better questions, become successful in all areas of life. So like, what is going to be the biggest hang up for someone? And I know that's a very, very broad question, but knowing that this audience is a little bit more ClickFunnels related, it's not specifically, uh, you know, not a cold audience, right? To the person that's there, they know what ClickFunnels is. They maybe even they have a funnel. And I mean, you know who I'm talking to and talking about here. They get this book. They're excited. <laughs> they bought it through my link or through Steve's link or through, you know, through your stuff. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Twice. Right. Or through everybody's link twice because everybody <laughs> said the bonuses are awesome. All right. Yeah. You're jacking up my stats though, you guys. Like the funnel's killing it. But even with that, people are buying the book three times. And it's like, anyway. <laughs> guys, apparently we're not supposed to do that. But Russell, I don't mind. Ru Keep Russell doesn't there. mind. Russell, he, he said it, not me. So, What's the biggest hang up that someone's going to read this book and they're going to be like, crap. And how do they get over that? Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm going to step back to answer that. Like, I think the reason why I've been successful in this business is because um, two, two really big experiences. One is my wrestling, right? Uh, in wrestling and in any sports, uh, I'd be willing to walk out there in a singlet, which is embarrassing by itself. With no dude. <laughs> And go head to head and you don't always win. A lot of times you lose and the other guy gets his hand raised, but I became okay with like, it's okay if I lose um, because I'm going to learn something like and I'm going to beat him next time. And so like that, that drive kept me going and going. And I spent the first man, 15 years of my life. That's all I focused on. Right. Um, I spent two years on a mission for my church, knocking on doors, which the first couple of doors, it is the scariest thing in the world. <laughs> Imagine like I'm in Jersey, uh, 
and they drop you off of some random street. I'm in this place called Carney's Point, New Jersey, which is like, I, I'm just like, they're gonna be like circus people yelling at me. Like, I don't even know. Right. So going in and, and, and uh, the first door, the guy I'm with, he knocks on the door and does the thing. And the next door is like, Hey, you're up. And I'm like, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm scared to death. I'm like this 19 year old kid scared of mine. Like I've knocked on the door. Someone comes out and this lady starts just yelling at me. <laughs> oh, no. and I'm like, I can't even say, I can't even get a word out. And then she slams the door in my face. I'm like, Oh, I'm like, I'm really bad. So I turned around and all of a sudden this car drives by and they honk. And I'm thinking, cause I'm from Utah. So I'm like, normally you see a, a missionary, like you honk and you wave at them. So I'm like, these people are going to wave at me. I turned around, they're honking. And there's three people flipping me off out of the car window. And I'm like, <laughs> this is the first like five minutes of me being in Jersey. And I'm like, this is horrible. But then I had to go to the next door and I'd knock again. And I and I get like for two years of that, like, and what's interesting is that, like, I, I built up um, uh, the, between wrestling and that, like this, this ability to like, um, dissociate myself with the outcome. Like if it fails, it's not me. It's the, hmm. it's the message was wrong, right? Like if, if it, if I, if I, if I knock on the door and they don't hear us because they don't want to hear the message. It's not that they hate me, even though they told me they hate me to my face. Like I hate you get out of my yard. Um, it's because they didn't like the message, right? In wrestling, if I lost, it didn't mean, they, didn't mean it was, like I was a failure. It meant I lost this match. I'm going to have a chance to wrestle this person again at the state tournament or somewhere down the line. I learned what am I going to learn from this? I got to figure it out because I have another shot later. And so because of that, like when I came to business, it wasn't, it was never like, I'm scared to put a business because what if I fail? I'm scared to think, what if I fail? It was just like, this is a test. And then, like, if I lose, that's cool because I'm going to like, I'm going to wrestle him again later. I'm going to try again. Like, like if this campaign doesn't do good, that's okay. I'm going to build another campaign. We'll keep trying until it works. And I became really good at that. The biggest thing I see people that, that struggle in entrepreneurship, especially if they, I feel like a lot of times people that have had sports or something in their past do better in entrepreneurship because they're they're not as afraid, but were people that it's the first time they have a lot of these, these internal struggles where they associate so much with themselves. I think the biggest thing that's going to hold people back is that they're going to be so scared of like, cause I talk about like, Hey, everyone in here, like if you read this, I'm going to tell you, you got to publish something. You're like, I don't want to publish. Cause what if someone hates my content? What if I put it out there? What if I say something stupid? What if I, blah, blah, like all the stuff's coming up. It's like, that's, that's what's keep people back. It's not that, not, not, they're not smart enough. They are. It's not that it's technical or too complicated. Cause it's not. It's not that they don't have enough money because that's that's a, a false thing that they believe in their mind. The the thing they're most scared of is they're scared that they're going to try and they're going to fail. Mm. That's it. And I think, um, and a lot of people fear like if I try and I fail, then my dream dies. Like a, the dream I have over here crumbles. And so they'd rather keep the dream and not try than to try and fail and potentially lose the dream. So I would tell people is that it's like, you have this dream, like keep the dream no matter what. And then you got to try. And if you try, and if it fails, the dream doesn't die. Like, it's just like when I lost my junior year, I think I told this from one of the books, my junior year in high school, um, I thought I was going to be a state champ. My very first match, I step out there and I lost to this guy. Um, I still remember Nick Freswitz from Hunter High School. I still remember the score of the match. I remember how I lost. I remember everything like 20 something years later. Wow. To this day. But I lost, right? But it didn't mean my dream crushed. Like I want to be a state champ. My dream didn't get crushed. I meant I lost. That's okay. What do I got to learn differently? And then four months later at the state finals, I wrestled Nick Freswitz again and I beat him in the finals and I became a state champ. Wow. And so it's looking at that, like, like if I lose here, if I publish and someone hates it, if I, I launch ad campaign, it fails, or if I have to go through bankruptcy or whatever the, the thing is down here, if that fails, it doesn't mean your dream disappears. The fear of us losing the dream is why we don't move forward over here. So to understand, like I lost my first match. I didn't lose the dream of being a state champ. I just had to do it again and do it again. Hmm. And I think if people understand that, then it gives yourself permission to go and fail. Um, and uh, I think there's so many people that have entrepreneurial scars of like, I, I tried something in the past and I failed, or I, uh, I, I, I have a friend who tried something and it failed and we have these fears of that. And it's like, I think you have to understand that as an entrepreneur, like those scars are a good thing. Like the best stories, like I built a business and I destroyed it. Like that's the scar. It's painful in the moment, but it's the scar that like, that gets you to where you need to be. Yeah. And it's important to understand that, like go get those scars. It's okay. I mean, look at the way that the government, you know, when the founding fathers found America here, they said the bankruptcy laws to give entrepreneurs the ability to risk everything and not have, you know, like if I fail a business, I get locked up in jail forever. Like there's bankruptcy laws to let you reset and like go back and try again. And I can't tell you how many of our super successful friends have gone through bankruptcy once or twice or three times before they hit their, their thing. But it's just like, you have to be okay with that and understand that like, it's part of the game. And it's just, it's a loss for you to readjust, but the dream doesn't have to disappear if you don't succeed. So keep doing it regardless of if it's going to work at first, because it probably won't the first few times. Hmm. I love that. One of the things I think is, um, has always been scary for me is uh, people have been telling me that I should write a book over and over and over again, right? They're like, Josh, you gotta write a book, you gotta write a book. You'd be having an awesome book. 
And my, my big thing is I'm like in the digital world, guess what? If I don't like something, I can hit edit and then I can go and I can change it. And everything's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be great. But I'm like, once I put something in print, once it's out there, I can't change it, right? It's, it's solid. And so my, my question is, is actually a two part question is one, you've gone back and you have rewritten these two books, right? Which I am so excited about because I'm like, I read these books and I'm like, I don't know how they can get any better. And then, oh gosh, Russell, you're just te teasing, just teasing me, so. me now. There they are. Did, did, you know what? You know what? Did Dave did Dave tell you what he did to me on stage at, at ClickFunnels? No. On his, okay. Oh on my, yes, yes uh, I saw from the back. I was in the back. I watched it. <laughs> real quick side note, guys. He, no. The, just, <laughs> well, he walks out with the box set, and he then pulls. So it's my birthday, guys, at Funnel Hacking Live. Which, by the way, thanks for throwing a big party for my birthday, Russell. I know you got Tony Robbins just for me. Um, so thank you for that. But they call everyone up on stage. They're like, if you had a birthday today or the last two days, like come up on stage. So obviously I go up there. It's my birthday. And so I see Dave walking out. We're all dancing up on stage and Dave's walking out. And he's got the box set. I think it was the box set in one hand, but I know he had traffic secrets in the other hand. And I'm like, you know how bad I wanted a copy of this book. And I know that the only people I'd gotten this is Inner Circle. So he walks up to me and I kid you not, he hands me the book and he goes, happy birthday. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And he goes, I wish I could give you this book, but it's my only <laughs> copy. And he takes it away. And I'm like, oh, that's just so sad. So anyway, so I'm so sorry. We, you guys really, really are. It's all right. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. But back to, the, that's why we teach it. <laughs> yeah, back to the question of this though. So you rewrote these books and now you've got this book out, which is, I mean, you, I'm sure you had to make sure this book was absolutely perfect. If you're going to re re rewrite these books or whatever, how do you know when the book is ready? Like, oh. man, I've, I watched you. I watch your Instagram stories every single day. I mean, you're one of like three people that I watch and I, I see you going in and like, no, this part has to be deleted. And I see the behind the scenes of how you're setting everything up. And it's like, at some point you've got to go, okay, it's ready. And then you got to leave it. And then he's got to go. And, and then you never get to touch it again. I mean, I've got a copy now. You can't change what's in this book. So <laughs> how do you know when that's ready? Oh, it is. I agree hundred percent. It's a scary process. I, um, I waited 10 years before I wrote dot com secrets book because of that same thing. I'm like, this is so permanent and final. And like, Oh, it, it's, it's weird. And I remember feeling the same thing. And so the dot com secrets book happened and then I refused to read it again. After, I was like, I don't, I'm so scared. And the extra secrets book we got done. I was like, I don't want to like, and I haven't it's in the, I did the audio book for traffic secrets and I'm scared to read it again. So I'm like, I know there'll be things I want to tweak or change. It's just like, I can't, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's definitely a, a big thing. And but it, what's cool about this is like when we did the, so when I started the project for the Traffic Seekers book, um, I talked to Hay House to publish it, which is like, um, they're awesome. And I was like, I would love to publish with them. And they said, yes. And then they, he's like, I want to do a hard, and Reed who owns Hay House is kind of crazy. He was like, I read your first two books. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, the dude who publishes the books, you read them? <laughs> anyway, I was so excited. And so he's like, I want to make your book a hardbound. And I was like, well, if we have one hardbound, like what if we had all three hardbound, but we had a different publisher for the first ones. And, and so, um, anyway, uh, I asked him like, if, if I get the rights back, if you want to publish all three and he's like, Oh, it'd be amazing. So I got the rights back with the other publisher. And so, um, it was funny cause like we're getting, killing ourselves on this one, trying to hit the, the pub date, which May 5th is the pub date when we actually run out to ship them and stuff like that. So we hit that. And then I was like, Hey, um, really quick, like as long as, as long as we're like, we're, you know, going to be publishing these. Are you okay if I tweak them a little bit? Like, Jeff, do I have some time? He's like, oh, like, you want to do some minor edits? That's okay. I'm like, okay. And minor then, um, edits. No. Yeah, like, Brother. literally, it's funny because, like, <laughs> I haven't read, again, I haven't read a Doc and Seuss book in five years because I've been so scared of it. So I started reading it, and I was just like, oh, like, I, I, I remember reading, like, a pair, I, I had, it was like this two-sentence story. I read a sentence, two story. I'm like, two sentences. I was like, oh, the Russell today, like, he tells stories a lot more elaborately than the Russell of five years ago. I was like, that, like I did not do that story justice. I was like, can I, uh, so I went and took a two, a two, uh, a two sentence uh, story and turned it into a page and a half to like <laughs> tell the story. So you understand it. So you can feel it inside. And then I'm going through the funnels. I was like, I was like, man, you know, since we launched ClickFunnels, I've had, you know, it's been five and a half years now. I've like actually watched people, you know, the dot-com secrets book was based on like my experience building funnels. It was nobody. It was just like, this is my world. And in the last five or six years, I've had a chance to like watch a hundred thousand plus people build funnels plus like people i'm really close with inner circle and the coaching pro things i've and, I, and like my my sh my mindset shifted on some things that are better ways to do things and how to do value ladder like what things happen and and so like literally this book as i started doing the value ladder stuff i get it <laughs> anyway it went from fifty eight thousand words to over ninety thousand words um, no, and I I you wrote a whole other book <laughs> i know i had deleted probably probably 20 25 000 words in here and i did it and then, uh, and then I, I like, if, 
at the very end, I messaged the publisher. I'm like, so I made more than a few edits. Like, is that okay? And he's like, oh yeah, send it over. And then I didn't, yeah, it was like basically a full rewrite. And then during that time when they had it, while they were looking at it, is my start, I'm like, expert six, I'm like, I gotta go. Cause they're gonna tell me, no, I gotta go as fast as I can. So I started going through the same thing. This book started at 60,000 and it ended at, uh, I think just shy of 90, so 89,000 words or something like that. Uh, with me deleting a whole huge part of it anyway. So yes, it was like a rare time I had a chance to go through, but, um, but, um, and the other thing that was really fun having this experience was because, because now I had this one here, there were things like I talked about in dot-com secrets, but I couldn't do them justice. Like the dream 100, like I talked about it in here, like, it's like you didn't do justice or a perfect webinar I talked about here, but I didn't do justice. And it's like, now I was able to kind of be like, Hey, here's mm -hmm. the concept, but I spent an entire book on over here, make sure. And I could push people back and forth. Like, here's the concept of, of story but like to really go deeper you have to go here and like this chapter here and like i was able to kind of cross-reference them which helped a lot it's, which made me so i could simplify a lot of stuff uh because it was more it was deeper over here and and um and then the stories are better just stuff that's that's yeah that i've learned in the last five years as we've gone through it, you know yeah um but then you're seriously the the question you led with which is like how do you know it's done like that's still the hardest thing like if i if i reopen these there'll be a hundred things i want to change but there's a point where it's just like you you can't and you have to stop like yeah and you had, so. and you had people i'm sure go through i know steve larson who we've had on the show multiple times before and shout out steve he's awesome i mean he wrote a chapter in the new expert secrets book right so you had people like that that you trusted go through them and make sure you didn't miss anything yeah I had people it's fun because like in the the first time i wrote the books we did it in in uh, microsoft words you write it and you send it to people and they edit it and come it was like a nightmare now google docs is like the greatest so in the world. nice oh my god <laughs> what's happening i'd be writing as fast as i could and then I had someone going through doing uh, a cleanup, like an editing cleanup, but I had people like Steven and Dave Woodward, people like that going through reading from like a conceptual sample. Like, does this actually make yeah. sense? Like, I think it does, but like, I want to make sure that it's clear. Um, uh, stuff like that. So they're reading behind it and kind of cleaning stuff up. And so like, I went through, I went through writing all the way through once and then the edit team and then the concept people went through. And then I came back to the top again, taking the concept stuff and looking again and writing again a whole nother time. And then I like, I did an impromptu reading at the doc, at the ClickFunnels offices where I like invited people locally. I'm like, I'm going to read this for three days. We're going to hang out. And I read it. Cause when you read it out loud, you're like, this, this is confusing. This doesn't make sense. Or, you know, so I did a whole out loud reading and then I had a chance to go back. And when I did the out loud reading, um, all of section two of traffic secrets, I hated. In fact, I stopped the reading like two thirds through. I'm like, this sucks. And they're like, you can't say it sucks. Like it literally has to be like, we, like next Wednesdays when we have to give them the, the editors that are on Hay House side the book. And so I spent like seven days, you know, I'm sorry, it was like five days at the office. So I didn't sleep for five days. because so like, I hate section two. And I rewrote the entire section two, which is like, I don't know, 150 pages. Um, and then I was like, I have no time to read it, but it's done. And then send it all. And it's like, ah, oh, like it's, that's it. I can't, I can't touch it again. It's a and stressful process. Holy oh, moly. <laughs> and then they do all their edits and then they give it back. And then they kind of like, like a professional editor edits it. And sometimes they take your voice out and you're like, ah, oh, that, that doesn't sound Eric. Right. <laughs> there's a section here. I tell, I tell uh, Natalie um, Hodson's story about peeing your pants and there's a medical condition for peeing your pants. I can't remember what the word is, but they put that word in throughout the whole book instead of me saying peeing your pants because peeing your pants, that phrase is offensive apparently. And so like I'm reading, I'm like, I don't even know what this word is. Like you, you have to change it back. Like like Russell would never say the, the right. condition. That right, they right, right, right. <laughs> people get it and they don't get it. They shouldn't be following me anyway. And like, so you have to go back through again and like fight with the editor over every single thing. And um, anyway, and then finally it gets, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely kind of a crazy process. Um, but I tell you what, this is, people always ask me, why do you keep writing books? And uh, the reason why, and this is why I think you should write a book eventually, maybe not today, but you should. Of all the things that I've done in, in my career now, 17, 18 years, however long I've been in this, um, the thing that's brought me personally the most fulfillment has been the books. Really? Hmm. So um it's it they just last longer like yeah. everything else you do there's like a there's a peak and a surge whereas like the books the the um the impact the books have over time is bigger i would say outside of click phones the actual software but every the software and the books like those are things that have the biggest impact yeah. over an extended period of time everything else we've ever done yeah and ryan holiday talks about that too and i know you're a huge fan as am i okay um i really do want to be respectful of your time i want to get to rapid fire questions do you have time for one more quick question or no Okay. One more quick question before we do rapid fire here. Um, you're, you're someone 
that I respect and looked up to for a lot of reasons. And, you know, I, I do want to take the time to say thank you, like for real, um, just because like you have done so much to change my life. Um, you have, you know, like all the way from the beginning, like just following you, like my parents would always tell me, like, you got to find good quality people to look up and follow to. And I didn't understand what they meant because I grew up in a you know, Christian home and like all my friends were Christians and everything like that. And then I get out to the real world. And the first person I stumble across is Russell Brunson. And I'm like, well, this is, I don't know what my parents were talking about. I found this random dude and he's cool. Right. And then I actually got out into the real world and I was like, Oh my gosh. And so, um, that's what they were talking about. Like, that's what they might. And I was, I was so lucky, so blessed to be able to find like you as one of my first mentors and, and people that we go through. And, and so, you know, seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I appreciate everything that you do. W one of the questions that I have for you is like, how do you go about balancing your faith in your content? Because, um, and you can take as long or as short as you want on this. Cause I know you have respective time here, but, um, that's one of the things that I've, I've always struggled with because I'm like, I want to be vocal about my faith. I want to like go out there and actually like do that. But at the same time, like you, you've got to balance it. And, and I, I know you've done a really, really good job with that. So like, how did, how have you done that? And why did you make that decision? Yeah. Um, very cool. It's, it's interesting. Cause yesterday was Sunday and I posted, um, I posted, uh, the scripture. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing it. Yeah. Just here, for those who you can see it, it says, uh, Perhaps you're both, uh, perhaps you're born for such a time as this, which is from the book of Esther, right? I just post it. And it's not really a religion. I mean, it's from a book that's technically religious, but it's like right. it's a scripture that like, if I would have said it without Esther, everyone would have been happy, right? Because it's like, yes, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. But because I had Esther and I had probably a dozen people who were like, that's it, business and business and religion should not be part, I'm out. And it just, it, it makes me laugh. So, <laughs> um, and it's interesting because I feel like, I said this during uh, when I did my first Corona update to the entire ClickFunnels community. I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure that if I was to like drop the F word three times, I'd get zero complaints. But uh, I'm gonna talk about God for a few minutes, and some of you guys are gonna get upset about it. But I, I don't really care at this point. And I was like, and I told him, I was like, you have to, like during crazy times like this, we have to turn our hearts back to God. And I was very blunt and very vocal, and I was scared to talk about it. But like, but it's it is what it is, and it is what I believe. And so. Um, I think, I think that there's definitely a fine line. I think my job and my goal is never to push religion, like to try to get something like, you need to be Christian, you need to be Mormon, you need to be like, like that's not my, my job, my role. My role is to live my life as happy as humanly possible and um, sprinkle in my content. I need to like, let people, like someone once told me one time, they said, if, if someone was trying to, con try to convict you of being a Christian, would it be enough evidence to, uh, to convict you? Mm, and if it's wow. Just you, then like, are you, are you really a person? And so, uh, I try to sprinkle it in so that people know if, 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 um, if, uh, if someone's struggling in life and they happen to follow me because of business, but they see, and this Russell guy's got stuff figured out. He seems happy. He's got a good family life and, and they need to be able to find uh, an outlet to be like, 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 what does he believe about God? Like I'm struggling here as well. Like maybe I can, maybe I can lose, like there needs to be, there needs to be sprinkled pot. And again, yeah. I'm, I'm never, I'm never pitching it. I'm never forcing. It. I'm never like saying you have to do this or like, I'm never, you know, but, but it's there so that yeah. when people, um, you know, Christ in the New Testament talks about, he says, my, my sheep will hear my voice. And they, and, um, I feel like it's the same way. Like our job is to like, like to put things out there that we believe in. And then the people who are listening for that will come to you. Right. Yeah. And so, um, in fact, here, this will tie back the book. Cause it's actually really good. Uh, in, in Travis Seeker's book, in the Instagram chapter, I share a whole thing from Jenna Kucher. Uh, she calls it the JK five, which is basically she's like pick five categories you like, you're passionate about. And on your Instagram wall, you rotate through those things, right? So like, and so like my, I, sh I share my JK five in here. And as if you guys, if you guys look through my feed, you'll notice that, um, that I rotate through there. But one of my, I mean, it's mine's like family, faith, funnels, entrepreneurship, personal development. There's my five, right? So my posts rotate through those five, right? And the reason why is because who's following me on Instagram or on Facebook, or whatever, right? Like I'm at my daughter's soccer game. And so all the, 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 the parents I get to know, there, like, Oh, who's Ellie's daughter or who's Ellie's dad? And they find me and they follow me and they see pictures of my family. And they're like, Oh, cool. This is Ellie's mm. thing. And like, they, they're seeing that. Right. Yeah. And then I go to a business event and be like, who's that Russell guy? Oh, he's a funnel guy. And they go to my Instagram, they follow me. They, they see my funnel content. Like, Oh, cool. Or personal development or whatever. Right. And then one of my things is, is faith. So like when I'm at church, people see me and they follow me they're like, Oh, cool. Here's Russell at church. And so <clears throat> I have these five categories mm. in my life that I'm sharing publicly. I'm not pushing them on anybody. I'm not pushing funnels. I'm not pushing faith. I'm just like, these are things I'm passionate about. I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to have them out there. And then what's going to happen is that people who go to church with me are going to be like, man, Russell's happy. He's, he's got things figured out. He's making money. Like, what's he doing? And they're going to see the funnel stuff. And then they're going to go and, mm. and like, what is this thing? And they're going to buy the book. And all of a sudden, like these people that would, would don't care about business, but because they have a relationship with me will now 
care so, about yeah. business, right? In fact, last Funnel Hacking Live, I think there's six people from my from my church who were at Funnel Hacking Live, which was kind of weird. Um, <laughs> two other ways, right? Like like people are following me for funnels, and all of a sudden we're in this time of like distress and fear, and they're freaking out. And they're like, why is Russell not freaking out? Why is his 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 head level? Like, why is he why is he prepared? And they're trying to figure this out, right? And they're struggling. Like, maybe they don't believe in God. Maybe they don't have like it doesn't really matter. But then they see a post like this, or I post a picture of me. Uh, Ooh, holding a picture of Christ on the boat and I share the scripture that says peace be still and 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 someone's gonna be like oh my gosh like maybe that's the thing and then they're gonna come to reach out to me I'll be like yeah this is my beliefs so I'm, I'm leaving I'm leaving trails out there for the people to hear what they like the people who are ready for that will come here and if they're not cool and some people will offend them and they're gone and I'm okay with that as well it doesn't really bother me um and so but it, but I, again I'm not I'm not ever pushing it you notice yeah. I never like try to push it. I just, I share. Yeah. And I leave it there and I, I don't share in a way that's, that's like cutting yeah. with like a sword, you know, some people, especially, and, and I love, um, ah, just, just people are so passionate that they come in and it's like, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. And it's like, ah, like that's not the way to, right. to get people like the way, the way to get people to, to, to want to listen to you and follow you is to, to come and serve them, um, live your life in a way that they would want to live. And if they're like, man, Josh has got his life figured out pretty well like what does he believe in other aspects of life because i want what he's got i want that yeah. light in his eyes i want that glow like and so it's, it's putting things out there so people can find it but not um not not pushing in a way that's going to defend you know what i mean so yeah for sure for sure well man i really appreciate you taking the time to explain that um i do want to wrap up here with some rapid fire questions just really quick and these are designed to be rapid fire so i asked try to answer them in 30 seconds or less which i know for people like you and i is like what the heck? Ah. But I think we'll get through them a lot faster. Stories I can tell about yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> take your marketing brain off and take your rapid fire brain on. All right. Really quick before right. we do that, guys, traffic secrets, Russell, hold it up. What guys, if you found value in this interview from Russell comment, hashtag, thank you, Russell down below. Hashtag. Thank you, Russell. Everybody go josh40.com slash traffic secrets. Go get your book. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. It's literally the best book ever and get the box set because you need the updated version of all of them. Yeah. Russell, one more time. Tease it really quick. Get all three oh. of them up there. Boom. And what's that fourth book? And then what? the Unlock the Secrets. Whoa, we don't even have time to go into it, but it's another bonus, epic, amazing book. Okay, rapid fire questions. Okay. Question number one, what's it like trying to launch the biggest book of, and launch of your entire career in quarantine? Um, actually, very unstressful. It's usually there's the chaos of the office and I don't hear it. And um, it's it's been really really nice, really peaceful, and um, I've really enjoyed it so far. Actually. Well, that's good. All right, I'm glad to do that. Um, what's the number one thing if you had to summarize it? And I know there's a lot, but number one thing that you want people to take away from the Traffic Secrets book? Um, well, the number one thing is that um, you do not have to rely on Facebook to get traffic. There's a storm coming, and um, it's important to understand the strategy band traffic so that you are, uh, your business will be protected and you can get your dream customers to come to you. Um, yes. Okay. I know that you made $3 million from stage, 1.5 million to you. So a million dollars an hour, which congratulations. It's amazing. I want to know what the single largest transaction that you have done from a single person that you personally have done and closed. Oh, um, I get, I get one time, like, like the wire was one number or like the relationship over. No. Yeah. Time. The w one sale, one sale. And maybe it was a payment plan of a couple, but like one transaction of like 60 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, million dollars, whatever it was. Oh, dang. Um, we've had a couple, uh, 100 grand, a bunch of 100 grands for sure. I'm trying to think if I've ever collected at one time more than that. I don't think I have. 100 grand one time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Multiple times that's happened, but yeah. All right. This question is inspired by Dave Woodward. In fact, we started asking everybody on the podcast after Dave came on. Um, if you ever had the chance to go to outer space, would you? If you get to come heck back, yes. heck yes. 100%, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, what's one bucket list item thing that you have not yet done in your life that you want to do? Oh, um, for some reason, I really want to go to Venice because I don't understand the whole rivers or streets thing. That's one place I've- I've really been there. Been. It's pretty fascinating. That's, that's probably about it. I've done almost everything else I want. All right. Do. Venice. All right. Uh, last question for you. We ask every single person that comes on the podcast this question. I want you to fast forward to the end of your life. You're on your deathbed. All your money, success, fame, click funnels, everything is gone. However, every single person in your life, which for you is going to be an awful lot that you have touched and affected either directly or indirectly, you get to leave them with one final message. What is that message? Oh, man. Um, wow. Just casual, like, like question there. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say wow. I should prepare for this one before we jumped on here. We don't um, tell it for that exact reason. I don't want you to prepare. We don't tell it to anybody. And I think on my deathbed, um, I think I would tell people that um, their their mission in business um, is so tied to their calling from God that if they understood that, they would act with a lot more urgency. Um, yeah, I think that I don't think I really realized that until a couple of years ago that that um that what I'm doing here isn't just like a business for fun to to waste the time, but it's actually tied to a bigger purpose and bigger meaning. I think that um everyone who's who's following their business are calling that it really is. And if you understood that, you, you would you would work a different intensity, different level. Um because uh it's it's bigger than what I think any of us actually think it is. So all right, Russell Brunson, everybody. Russell, thank you so much for coming on. Any last words or anything that you want to tell people? Dude, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. It's been such a, just been so much fun watching you grow over the last couple of years. I'm just proud of you, man, and love having you in this community. I think you do so much good for it. And uh, just grateful for you. And I think everyone, if you haven't yet, get your book at trafficseekers.com. Um, all the words, these are all, like, now that this is done, this is all I have to say. So this is everything I've ever learned the last decade and a half. You can shortcut it down. Do um, you get the audio books? Uh, I spent, I spent, uh, I think seven hours of actual audio time are all three books. Um, so in 21 hours, you can know everything I learned in the last uh, 15 years of my life, all compressed and handed to you in chronological order. Um, so take advantage of it. I'm a big geek with books because man, you're able to take a decade of someone's life and get it in, in a day. And um, that's what I try to do here. And hopefully you guys get a ton of value from it. So thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate you. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much, guys. Become as smart as Russell Brunson. Get the box set, Traffic Secrets book, josh40.com slash Traffic Secrets. As always, hustle, hustle. God bless. Do not be afraid to think different uh, because those of us that think different are going to be the ones that change the world. I love you all, and I will see you on the next episode. Russell, thank you so much, man. Take it easy, fam. Peace. Bye.